Hey guys, what is going on? Paragon here, and we are going to go through the King's Fall hard mode raid. So, a couple of changes, and uh, mainly we'll notice, I think the gear difference is the biggest thing you'll notice early on. With uh, being the lower light levels, you are taking a lot more damage, but our portal encounter is exactly the same. The mechanics have not changed at all. You grab the relics, you bring them back to the middle, slam them into the statues, rinse and repeat, two guys mid, all, all the same stuff as the normal strategy. Nothing changes here, so pretty straightforward. So we're not going to get any changes until we get to that first jump puzzle. But a couple of things getting ready for this raid. I would highly recommend that you be around 305 light uh, and to get a good chance of getting through here with enough damage. Once you get to Oryx, I mean, I cleared Oryx at 307 on my Warlock and I was 312 on my Hunter, but it's, it's really going to be, your, your damage drop off isn't too much, but you're going to be taking a lot more damage, so your survivability is what's getting challenged here. Again, with all hard mode raids, you get the same thing, you can't revive when you're in the darkness zone. So that first part, we're not in the darkness zone, so that's fine. The jump puzzle, as always, bow or wave when your teammates fall off the ship. It's, it's just a must. You must do that in the raid. It's uh, a sign of respect and disrespect at the same time. But the only thing that changes is you'll notice that middle platform that we usually use as our checkpoint marker is not there. So make sure you, you are really, really confident with this jump puzzle. I have a guide, which will be in the description below. There'll be a link for that one. But make sure you get really confident with this jump puzzle because if you make any mistakes, you're back to the start. Not fun for you and not fun for your team. So moving on to the totems, we have one change here. Besides the fact that we can't revive Titans, I definitely recommend that you guys run Blessing of Light over Weapons of Light. It is much more important to have that shield and that survivability here than to have that extra damage output. Because we never really noticed a problem with the damage. It's the same thing. Prioritize the Boomer Knights and prioritize the Sword Knights. The only difference is when we get to the later phases, the last two turn-ins of our power, we're going to start getting yellow sword knights spawn and they are a pain in the ass if you do not kill them very quickly they are going to get through down to your totem and give you a very very hard time so a great way to deal with them as you would have seen me doing at the start of this clip matt and i were dropping our shadow shots all over that door so the second they came out we were able to burn them really really quickly so it's really important that you focus on survivability here. Now, until you get to higher light levels and uh, you know, you're taking similar damage to as you would in normal, I would focus on the survivability talent. So make sure you've got a good amount of toughness. Make sure that you're confident with taking cover. Usually you've got your cover. Making sure you're not, you know, any health regen, shield regen, overshields, you know, your warlock, sun singer melee, but the Titan Bubble, Run Blessing of Light, it's very, very valuable in the hard raid, keeping everybody alive. Same mechanics though, so grabbing the buff, get the aura to both totems, rinse and repeat. Everyone's going out, coming back in, bringing their power to the middle, clearing ads as necessary, and uh, focusing on those knights and wizards. So the Boomer Knights are really, really tough at lower light levels in here. They're going to kill you in two to three shots, depending on your light level and how much armor you run. But make sure that you're really confident with your sniping. A good sniper shot, if you've got a you know a higher or a medium to high impact sniper, you're going to be able to take them out in one shot, one headshot, and uh, you'll take those knights out. It makes it much easier for everyone else. So to recap, the only real changes in this first section are the jump puzzle. The portal section is exactly the same, but we have no revives when we get to the totem. So if someone dies, you guys are going to be in a world of hurt. As you can see, we just lost a team member then, but we are on our last run. Very fortunate here, and uh, we were able to keep moving on and, and complete the encounter. But focus on survivability. Survivability is key in the hard mode raids because you don't have that revive option. Unless you're using the Warlock self res, which uh, there's only one encounter where you actually can't use that, which we'll touch on when we get there. But make sure you are staying alive. That's number one key for hard mode raid success is stay alive. So thank you very much for watching guys. If you have any questions, leave a comment. Don't forget to drop me a like if you like this video and be sure to tune in for more Destiny content. See ya.